Hi, everybody. It's Professor Mitchell, and we have finally made it to the end of the semester. Uh, so the last thing we have to look at is uh, polar coordinates. So I've combined three sections, 11.3, 11.4, and 11.5 on polar coordinates. I'm hoping uh, that in your pre-calculus class, you had an introduction to polar coordinates. If you didn't, or if you just want to review it, I'm going to leave a link to my uh, video on polar coordinates that I have for my pre-calculus class. So I will leave that in the comments uh, on this video. All right, so first uh, we'll review the definition of polar coordinates. So uh, in polar coordinates, instead of identifying points with an X and a Y, we identify them with an R and a theta. So you start at the origin, which is also called the pole. And to get to your point, first you identify an angle theta uh, that will take you from the initial ray along the positive X axis up to uh, the ray that contains that point. And then the value of R is the directed distance from the origin to that point. And the reason I say directed distance is because uh, that value can be negative. So polar coordinates, as you hopefully know, are great for a lot of things. Uh, one slightly annoying thing about them is they are not unique. And there are two reasons for that. Uh, first of all, you have a bunch of coterminal angles. So for example, if this angle was uh, say pi over six, if you add or subtract any multiple of two pi uh, to that value of theta, you will arrive at the same point. And the other reason is because the value of R can be negative, I'm going to review in just a moment how the negative value of R works. It basically reflects that point through the origin. All right, so it, rather than me trying to explain it, let me just uh, show you the examples that are coming right up here. So again, uh, polar coordinates, you have an R and a theta. R is the directed distance from O to P, and theta is the directed angle, that angle can also be negative, from the initial ray to the ray or to the line segment OP. All right, so for our first example, uh, we're going to plot the following points. This is really a pre-calc example. Uh, these points are given in polar coordinates. We will plot those points and then we will find all of the polar coordinates that describe each of those points. So I'm going to go over to the tablet. All right, so I've got that all set up here. And uh, starting with letter A, <clears throat> I think I'll use a bolder line for this. <clears throat> all right, so first I have to get to the angle pi over four, which of course is up here. And then I need to travel three units from the origin. So one, two, three, whoops. Okay, that's gonna drive me nuts. <laughs> Every time I uh, press on the image for too long, my tablet thinks I wanna edit it. All right, okay. <laughs> um, I think what I'd like to do is maybe save the uh, finding all polar coordinates for those points until the end, maybe. All right, so let's continue with letter B. Uh, so again, starting at pi over four, but this time R is negative three. So what that does is it goes in the opposite direction through the origin and winds up over there, okay? All right, and then uh, for letter C, three comma negative pi over four, of course, you know that negative pi over four is down here. We would travel clockwise from the positive X axis. And then we have a positive value of R, so that works the normal way, just go three units along that angle. 
Okay, and then finally we have uh, negative three comma negative pi over four. So we would start along the same angle, but then we would reflect that point through the origin one, two, three, we would wind up up there, okay? So again, if you have never seen polar coordinates before, or if you're just rusty, uh, please look at the video description on YouTube. And I will have the link to my uh, pre-calc video where I definitely explain it from scratch. Okay, going back to the other part of this problem where we had to find all polar coordinates uh, describing each of those points. I kind of wish I had left a blank uh, slide for this, but I will do the best I can. All right, starting with three comma pi over four. Okay, well, first of all, uh, you can add or subtract any multiple of two pi. So any point of the form three comma pi over four plus two n pi, where n is any integer. I don't think I've ever used that notation in here before. All right, but that's what that stands for. N is an element of the integers or N is any integer. And then remember, we also have to allow for R uh, being negative, all right? So um, if R was negative three, then we would need to start along this angle down here which is five pi over four. All right, so then that would be negative three comma five pi over four. And again, you can add or subtract any multiple of two pi. All right. So hopefully that makes sense. Um, I'm not sure that we really need to do every single one of these. Maybe I'll just do letter B. Uh, after, after, we, after we've done more than two of them, I think it starts to get a little repetitive. All right, so let me uh, get rid of these. These are going to work exactly the same as A and B. All right, so uh, letter B. All right, first of all, uh, you can add or subtract any multiple of 2 pi to this pi over 4 leaving the value of R alone. Maybe this time I'll put the N as an element of the integers at the end. Okay, you could also make the value of R positive. And remember that this uh, point was right there. So uh, you could identify it with a positive value of R and use five pi over four. And again, adding or subtracting any multiple of two pi. All right, so hopefully, uh, hopefully you get the idea there. I'm gonna go ahead and switch back to the presentation. All right, the bird's saying hello there in the background. All right, polar equations and graphs. In this example, we're going to graph the sets of points whose polar coordinates satisfy the equations and inequalities. So I have this set up for when I'm in a classroom working on a whiteboard. I uh, had to adapt it a little bit for what we're doing here, but that's fine. I think it'll work. So let me once again switch over to the tablet and we will start with r equals three so all points <coughs> uh, where r is equal to three uh, that gives you a circle consisting of all points three units from the origin I have to say I draw a circle much better on a whiteboard or even on a piece of paper than I do on the tablet, but I'm gonna do my best here. 
Okay, that is a graph of the equation r equals three. That's not too bad. Still would have done better on the actual whiteboard. All right, uh, next we have theta equals five pi over six. So where is five pi over six? Well, it is over here. So it would definitely include all of these points. But then remember the value of R can be negative. So it would also include these points over here. So theta equals five pi over six is the equation of a line in uh, polar coordinates, a line that passes through the origin. All right, next we have, um, well, an equation along with uh, an inequality. So we know r equals negative one is a circle. It's a circle of radius one. However, it's saying that theta is restricted to be between uh, zero and pi, okay? So what's gonna happen here, because the value of r is negative, we would initially start off, uh, let me see, I think yellow might be a good color to start this in. We would initially start off, uh, here. Okay, but because R is negative, that's going to reflect all of those points through the origin. So we don't actually want that half circle. We want this half circle. All right. And then finally, we have uh, theta is between zero and pi over two, and the absolute value of R is between one and two. So let's ignore the absolute value for a second and just pretend it said uh, r is between one and two. Theta is between zero and pi over two. That would be, um, well, this region right here, right? Okay. Sorry, I'm obsessing over my picture a little bit. Okay, that's good enough. All right, that's if R is between one and two, but notice it says the absolute value of R is between one and two. That means that there are two possibilities. Either R is between one and two. The other possibility is that R is between negative two and negative one. Okay, so we need to uh, reflect that region through the origin. And the complete graph of this region would be, would include uh, all of this stuff over here. Okay. Yeah. No, stop it. Okay. All right, good enough. All right, so that takes care of that example. Let's go back to the presentation. I believe the next thing is graphing, uh, well, it's more graphing equations. Now the equations are gonna get a little more complicated. Ah, uh, so again, hopefully this is review. We have these equations relating polar and Cartesian coordinates. In my pre-calculus video, I explained uh, where these equations come from. So that would be worth a look if you haven't seen that before. So to convert from uh, polar to rectangular or Cartesian, you would use these two equations here. And then to go the other way to convert from rectangular to polar, uh, you would use these two equations here, okay?